Malcolm Turnbull calls it the golden age of gas, and certainly Australia is in the midst of an enormous gas export boom. Export volumes are only equaled by Qatar, yet the Australian government reaps only a fraction of the revenue. A tax that's meant to share the profits with the community is actually failing to raise any new revenue. Now a coalition of civil society groups is calling for a parliamentary inquiry into the petroleum resources rent tax after revelations that huge new gas projects may deliver no tax benefits for decades. Stephen Long has this report. As the vast reserves in the nation's northwest are exploited, Australia is set to become the world's biggest gas exporter. But it will be a long time before this delivers a tax bonanza. There'll be no new revenues from the primary tax on oil and gas for the next two decades and perhaps even longer. It's enough to make Jason Ward turn to drink. In 2018, we know that Australians will be paying three times more tax on beer, and that's excluding GST, than the oil and gas industry will pay on the primary tax on all oil and gas production. The Northwest Shelf used to be exempt from the petroleum resource rent tax, but the Gillard government extended it to these rich deposits as part of a deal to water down the controversial mining super profits tax. The promise at the time was that it would deliver tens or even hundreds of billions of dollars in revenue. That's unlikely. Into the future, we could be losing hundreds of billions of dollars on the gas boom that is coming through. West Australian Treasury documents obtained under Freedom of Information say the major LNG projects off the WA coast are unlikely to raise significant PRRT revenue over the next few decades. That's probably a projection by Treasury based around a whole set of assumptions which may or may not prove to be right. We want to see a parliamentary inquiry and we want the parliament to identify where the loopholes are and to identify what changes to the law need to be made to fix the loopholes. The Industry Association blames the flatlining of PRRT on a blowout in capital costs and a collapse in prices. The problem we have at the moment is that the international oil price and gas is effectively pegged to that, you know, has crashed, more than halved. But generous tax concessions are under fire, including laws allowing oil and gas producers to claim exploration costs on any project, plus the long-term bond rate and 15% against the petroleum resource rent tax. Any spending that the oil companies classify themselves as an exploration expenditure is then entitled to this 18% uplift or augmentation as they call it, which allows them to sort of get 18% compounded annually every year. Analysis by the Tax then Justice just Network estimates that Qatar will receive $26.6 billion in royalties from its gas reserves in three years' time, while Australia will gain just $0.8 billion from the PRRT. It's hard to imagine that Qatar is doing a better job of managing its natural resources and benefiting its own people than the Australian government currently is. The super profits tax is only paid when you're making super profits. It's a tax the industry would love to pay more of because it would mean that we were doing particularly well. But at the moment, we've depressed prices, evident in uh, the global market, reflected in share prices and dividend returns to investors. Uh, we're clearly not achieving super profits for most of these new projects. We want a decent society where we can fund our schools, our hospitals, our universities, our aged care system. The government is looking to cut in many of these areas, aged care being the latest one. We need this, this revenue for the benefit of the community so we can have that decent society. Don't rely on what Malcolm Turnbull declared the golden age of gas to deliver it.